Well, good morning, one and all. It is New Mexico in the morning. My name is yeah, Rich Allen, a fill in for Will Rooney. And boy, let's talk horse racing right away. Of course, it is that time of the year. Rio Dos are down. It's a big weekend coming up. And you know what? We're going to go to the expert right now as we're going to go to talk to uh, Mr. Mike there at uh, Sure Bet Racing. Mike, how you doing, partner? I'm doing great, Rich. It's, it's great to be great to be with you this morning, especially to talk about all the good racing going on i'll, t- I'll tell right you what there, right here in Rudoso this weekend that's right right here i mean we got it i mean we've got coming up we've got the Rudoso derby we've got the fraturity uh, final also coming up and uh, uh another big crowd expected here in Rudoso to see the great horse racing that comes to southeast new mexico at Rudoso downs a tradition uh, a lot of folks come up from all over the place not only in new mexico but a lot of our friends from west texas and texas in general come up to see horse racing and I know the last couple of weekends, since the season has just kicked off here, man, there's been sellout crowds and, well, and, and good know, horses. They bring in great horses in here. Well, yeah, I mean, the quarter horse racing at, at Rudoso Downs is uh, really second to none. I, I personally think that the two best quarter horse meets uh, of the year are at Remington Park in Oklahoma City, mm-hmm. Which ended uh, about a week ago, and then uh, Rudoso. It's uh, it makes for a really good circuit. You have mm-hmm. Remington Park, which begins in early March, right. and then and then um, and then a lot of those horses move to Rudoso and race in the summer right up through Labor Day, and then they move to Texas or or on to Zia Park in Hobbs. Right. So, uh, it makes for a really good circuit, and the quality is just second to none. And, and not only the quality and second to none and, and everything, but what it does is it, these horses and the trainers and the teams come up and these and they bring their horses to Rio Doso, and they love it here in the summer because why? Because not only is it beautiful, but the weather is so much better, so much cooler racing up in the mountains. Well, yeah, the, the pe- not only do the people like it, but I think a lot of the horses like it, too. Once they get acclimated to the altitude, yeah. which, which can take some time, um, I, think, I think horses thrive up there, too. And I think it shows when you, when you look at the, uh, you know, how many track records are broken every yeah. year, how many stakes records are broken every year. The racing just gets better and better. Uh, you know, one of the things I, I, I noticed when I was uh, looking at the racing, the, the race cars this weekend is, you know, we're, we're going to talk about the Rudoso Derby tomorrow and the Futurity on Sunday, but sure. uh, really those races anchor a uh, very, very strong race car. It's a 12 race car tomorrow, yeah. an 11 race car on Sunday. And when you consider how much trouble so many tracks have in this region, uh, in the southwest, and really you could go all the way over to the west coast, how many, how much trouble these tracks have filling race programs, eight or nine races a day. Sure. The fact that, the fact that Rudoso Downs is able to fill uh, 11 races to, um, on Sunday and 12 races tomorrow, and yeah. you also look at the strong race cards at Sunray Park in Farmington this weekend, I think it really shows... Uh, how strong New Mexico racing is. Uh, not only, not only uh, are, we, are we talking about big, you know, good race cards this weekend, but both the Derby and Futurity have record purses this year, and I think that is another example of how strong our industry is here. Oh yeah, New Mexico is really thriving in the uh, horse racing community, so to speak. Now, Mike, with Surebet Racing, give us a little bit uh, of background on what Surebet Racing does. Well, Surebet Racing is a website and a, and a monthly magazine that covers racing primarily here in the Southwest. But, uh, you know, if you go to the website, you can find news about the Triple Crown races. You can find news about racing out in California and um, out, up, up in the Northwest. Robert Geller, who is the track announcer at Emerald Downs, uh, as, as well as Sunland Park mm-hmm. in the winter, here in New Mexico, um, it does a really good job of covering racing up there and letting people know what's going on uh, in the state of Washington, mm-hmm. too. So, I mean, you know, it, 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 it primarily covers racing here in the Southwest, but really, uh, it, it, we, cover, we cover racing in Texas, Oklahoma, uh, a little bit of Iowa, uh, pretty much all over the country. Sure. 
And, uh, of course, let's talk a little bit about uh, what people can expect at the Rio Doso Derby. Now, the Derby is going to bring in some fantastic horses once again this year. Well, yes. The trials were held uh, a couple of Saturdays ago, uh, May 25th. And uh, there was a real interesting phenomenon that happened. The, the uh, infamous uh, Ruidoso downed winds uh, mm-hmm. had a, played a, a factor in the trials. Yes, they did. Uh, the, the last three trials, uh, the horses were aided by a 15-mile-an-hour tailwind, and there was a very strong headwind uh, during the first part of the card. Uh, there were eight trials held all together, and... Um, as a result of that, my top pick in the Rio Doso Derby is going to be a horse, Wicked Courage, who qualified from the first trial. Oh, okay. Uh, he he had he was the tenth fastest qualifier, um, but he had to deal with a twenty-five mile an hour headwind in his trial, uh, and the other nine qualifiers qualified from the last three trials. Um, Wicked Courage. Even though he was the 10th fastest qualifier, mm-hmm. he had a Trackmaster speed rating, and I use the Trackmaster Equibase speed ratings when I handicap. His Trackmaster speed rating was 108, which was better than any of the other qualifiers because the Trackmaster ratings are adjusted uh, to uh, deal with the changing wind and track conditions. So I really think that even though he is the 10th fastest qualifier and really barely made it in, I think he has a really, really good shot to win the final tomorrow. Well, it's just like in horse racing, just like in track, track and field, if if you're a sprinter and you have to do that 100-meter uh, sprint going into a 20-mile-an-hour breeze, I mean, that's going to that's gonna affect your time, no doubt about it. Absolutely, and the same thing applies to quarter horse racing. Sure. And it's what, make, and it's what makes the trials at Rue Doso so um, interesting, nerve wracking. If you're an owner or trainer, sure. Oh yeah. Because because you know you 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 hope to get into to the one of the trials where you have favorable conditions, mm-hmm. not just with the wind, but also with the rain that can that yeah. can hit and, and cause a track. You know the, the the actual racing surface conditions to change. Um, but it makes it interesting if you're a, if you're a fan, if you're a follower of the race, and mm-hmm. and, and that is a, an angle, a handicapping angle that I think people really need to pay attention to. When you're handicapping the finals of a Derby or a Futurity, and we'll be talking about uh, the Rainbow sure. uh, trials and, and finals in in July um, here on this program. But, uh, you know, you really need to take a, a really close look at that. The other thing I like, too, about Wicked Courage is the fact that he uh, he's won six races in a row, mm-hmm. including two stakes at, at, uh, in Oklahoma last year. So, you know, I, 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 think, that, I think that that and the fact that, that he qualified from one of the earlier trials is going to make him, I think, the horse to beat tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Another, another horse that I like um, is the second fastest qualifier, A Dream to Remember. Uh-huh. Uh, she's a really, really nice, n- nicely bred filly by Corona Cartel in the morning line favorite. Now, she had the benefit of qualifying from one of the later trials, so she had the favorable wind conditions. But she had a really, really good two-year-old season. She won the Hobbs America Futurity at Via Park last year and ran second to uh, a horse named Secret Courage in the Grade One Southwest Juvenile Championship, so she's another one who, uh, who I think has a really good shot. I also like the fastest qualifier, Charvette, who uh, shipped in from uh, Remington Park, and she ran a uh, he ran, I'm sorry, a really good third in the Oklahoma Derby back in March. So I give I give him a, a, a good sh- a good chance. Uh, also, as well, um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I just think it's going to be a really, really good race, uh, and and I think it's going to be a good betting race, and I think the fans are really going to enjoy watching it and trying and and trying to come up with horses that they think are, are going to be contenders because that's you know part of the fun of this. You can listen to uh, you know the so-called experts like me um, and 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 kind of get some ideas on how you're going to bet. 
uh, with that. But part of the fun of horse racing, I think, is the interactive nature. I stress this uh, when I do handicapping seminars, when I talk about handicapping. Horse racing is the uh, original interactive sport. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, every time you go to the races and you and you handicap a race and you make a bet, you're 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 making a, a financial investment in that in that horse and and it makes it a lot of fun. It really it really does. It does. Now we're talking about you know of course here in New Mexico uh, across the state and right here in southeast New Mexico very much drought conditions. So, uh, but uh, yesterday we actually had about uh, maybe a half of an inch of rain fill, fill in the area, and of course. Uh, everybody loved it because it's been so dry up here. Now, the horses, there are certain horses that react to, I guess, muddy fields. And also, if a thunderstorm is occurring or brewing up or there's a little lightning in the area, do you look at whether or not that's going to shake up a horse? Well, it's it's hard to tell, uh, you know, today what what's going to happen tomorrow yeah, or yeah. Sunday as far as how that's going to affect the horse. best thing to do is to take a look at how at how a horse is acting in the paddock. Mm-hmm. And Rudoso, you know, the beautiful thing about Rudoso, it's real easy from the stand mm-hmm. to, well, you know, you don't have to get out of your, out of your seat to, to look at the horses in the paddock. If you have a really good pair of binoculars, you sure. can just focus out there. And, and take a look at how they're acting. Take a look at how they look on the track once they come on the racetrack. You right. know, do they look like they're, they're, they like uh, warming up in, uh, uh, in, in wet conditions? Sure. It, it, it's hard. To, it's, it's really hard, though, because, you know, we don't get a lot of rain here in New Mexico. Right. And so, you know, if, if horses have been prepping at, at Sunland Park, for example, uh, in the spring... Uh, you know, they, they don't really get a chance to show what they can do in those kinds of conditions. Sure. So you kind of have to you kind of have to play it by ear and just be be alert and and uh, and take a look at what's going on out on the track. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's interesting. You know, and, and then of course the fraternity is is uh, coming up as well this weekend, and yes. it looks like that's going to be one humdinger too. Yeah. You know, the, the fraternity is. Uh, is the first leg of the All American Triple Crown, which uh, uh, has has been very elusive uh, the, these last few years. Uh, really, the last thirty one years, thirty two years since Special Effort did it in nineteen eighty one. Sure, um, you know he was, uh, of course, in a, in a, really in a class by himself when it comes to uh, uh, two year olds, especially. Uh, he was uh, really something to watch, and sure. uh, and I think tomorrow's race. Uh, um, you know, I, as, and when I was looking at the tracking the, the purse history of the race, the very first Rudoso Futurity in 1993 had a purse of almost $327,000. Tomorrow, it's going to be $750,000. And, mm. and, and not only that, but the winner is going to be the only horse that has a chance to, uh, you know, to get that $4 million triple crown bonus. So, uh, you know, there, there's going to be that kind of... Uh, intrigue sure. on Sunday as well. Oh, yeah, a lot of money at stake for a lot of these uh, horses and a lot of these teams. A lot of money at stake. And, and of course, some of these horses that are coming into the fraternity, I mean, they've got, I mean, they've got some pretty good uh, horses there that have really good past records, too, as well. And, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. you're, bringing in, you're, you're bringing in some great uh, horses uh, to race the fraternity. Yes, um, and and most of them that qualified got their start at Sunland Park, right? And um, you know they they uh, uh, some of them some of the better horses some of the contenders actually made their career debuts in the uh, in the trials. So it's kind of you know it, it's kind of uh, uh, you know you have a lot of lightly raced horses, and and uh, the, the nice thing about 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 a futurity like this is that you get to see a lot of the stars of tomorrow. Sure. Uh, you know, horses like Ochoa mm-hmm. and yeah. Heart and Hearts Wide Open that had good two-year-old seasons up at Rio Del Sol. DM Chicago is another one. Uh-huh. But then they went on the next year, their three-year-old seasons. Sure. And had good three-year-old seasons. Sure. So, you know, 
this, this is a chance for us to kind of see the stars of tomorrow, the future of quarter horse racing, and and um, it's one of the reasons why I look forward to the to the futurities is is for that reason alone. Yeah, and and it, it keeps people interested. People are really horse people that really follow the racing, and they they have their favorites, a favorite horse or favorite couple of horses. They keep following them year after year after year to see their progress and and uh, how they're doing and i mean like ochoa for example you still hear people talking about ochoa a lot yeah, sure. you know and yeah. uh, a lot of people around here have seen o- ochoa ra- uh, run on a couple of occasions here at riadosa downs of course uh, riadosa downs as we mentioned a big weekend and uh, we want folks to come on out and enjoy themselves and have fun and you know it, it's good family entertainment i mean you, you go out there to Riadoso Downs and the racetrack. You look around and you see how many people bring their their uh, sons and daughters out there. Whether they, even the little ones, whether or not they, they're just interested in seeing the horses run. Oh, look, Daddy, a horse! <laughs> you know, yeah. and, that, and that makes it a lot of fun. Well, sure, and, it, and it's also free parking, free admission. Oh yeah. Um, you know, so I mean, the price is, is definitely right, and and uh, you know, it's the only sport really where we. Can, you can walk out with more money than what you walked in with. Uh, you know, you can't do that at a football game, can't do it at a baseball game. Um, and I like those two sports, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I'm a yeah. baseball fan, big baseball fan, huge baseball fan. But, um, you know, horse racing gives you that opportunity to, to, to walk out with more money than you walk in with. And it's the only sport, it's the, it's the original interactive sport, and I think... Uh, you know, I think if you go out to the track this weekend, you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of that type of uh, of action going on. I think you're absolutely right, Mike. Mike with uh, Surebet Racing. Mike, thank you very much for joining us for a few minutes here on New Mexico in the morning. We appreciate you kind of giving us a rundown and and what people uh, can expect to see at the Rio Downs and some of the great horses that are going to be there for folks uh, to be entertained by this weekend. So, uh, well, it's, it's my pleasure, Rich. I always talking about horse racing and and i look forward to doing it again in july with the uh, uh, rainbow trial oh yeah that ought to be fun too hopefully yeah. we'll see you up here in the mountains one of these days oh yeah i i plan to be up for the zia festival which uh is going to be the end of july and also for the new mexico bread yearling sale oh, in august oh, so of course okay. i i i definitely um definitely looking forward to my to my uh to my first trip up there this year. All right, Mike. Well, you have a great day. And again, thank you very much. We appreciate you on uh, New Mexico in the Morning. It's Mike with SureBet Racing. And we've got more New Mexico in the Morning coming up next.